Welcome to lecture 20, section 4.5, basis and dimension. We are using the text Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson's 7th edition, Sengage Learning. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. Our goals for today, number one, to recognize basis in vector spaces like Rn, Pn, the set of m by n matrices, and to find the dimension of a vector space. Let us start with a few definitions. Number one, a set of vectors as defined by the vectors v1, v2, vn in the vector space v is said to be a basis for v if and only if the following two conditions are satisfied number one s spans v okay we know what that means i.e for every vector in v we can always write that vector as a linear combination of the vectors in s number two s is linearly independent we know what that means again that means whenever summation alpha i v i, i from 1 to n equals 0, the alpha i's must be equal to 0. So if I give you a set S and ask you to verify whether S is a basis of a vector space, there are two things you have to verify. Number one, that S spans that particular vector space in question i.e. pick an element in that vector space and see if you can find scalars alpha 1 to alpha n such that v equals alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus plus alpha n vn if that is done then you have to go ahead and set the equation submission alpha i v i equal to zero and solve that homogeneous system if your only solution is the trivial solution alpha i equals zero for every i then that means s is linearly independent and those two proven conditions would have satisfied the conditions for s to be called a basis for the vector space v now if a vector space has a basis consisting of a finite number of vectors then we say v is finite dimensional otherwise v is infinite dimensional now when we talk about basis for vector spaces we could either be talking about a standard basis or the non-standard basis for the case of r3 the set of triples the standard basis would be one zero 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 one zero 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 one it's very easy to verify that every vector in r3 can be written as a linear combination of these vectors if i pick a vector v in r3 with entries v1 v2 v3 then i can always write v as a linear combination of these vectors and number two if you take a linear combination of these vectors and equate that to zero the only possible solution is that all the alpha i's would be equal to zero. In other words, S spans R3 and S is linearly independent. So S forms a basis for the vector space R3. It's a standard basis, so there's really not very much that's complex with respect to uh, this. If I was dealing with Pn, or let's say P3, the set of polynomials of order 3, the standard basis will be 1, comma, x, comma, x squared, comma, x cubed, and so on and so forth. What is more exciting is the concept of non-standard basis. So verify that the set S is a basis for R3. Of course, this already tells us that S is not unique. So how would you go about proving that S is a basis for R3? Number one, you show that these vectors span R3 once more. If I pick a vector U in R3, 
I can write u as a linear combination of the vectors in S. Secondly, if I set the equation alpha into this first vector plus beta times this second vector plus lambda times this second vector equal to zero, then all the scalars must be equal to zero. So verify that it spans R3 and it is linearly independent. And thus conclude that S is a non-standard basis for R3. Uniqueness of basis representation. If S defined by the vectors V1, V2 up to Vn is a basis for the vector space V, then every vector in V can be written in one and only one way as a linear combination of the vectors in S. That's interesting. Let's look at another theorem that involves basis and linear dependence. Once more, if S is a set defined by the vectors V1, V2, right up to Vn, then we say that if S is a basis for a vector space V, then every set containing more than n vectors is linearly dependent. So once I verify that S is a basis for the vector space V and S has n elements, then it doesn't matter which set you bring before me. If the set has more than n elements, then I can automatically conclude that that particular set is linearly dependent, i.e. that set cannot be a basis for V because it is not linearly independent. Let's look at another theorem. We shall prove some of these theorems in class and others will be left as simple exercises for serious students. Number of vectors in a basis. If a vector space has one basis with n vectors, interesting, then every basis for V must have n vectors. Wow, this just ties up with what we saw before. Remember before we said, if S defined by the vectors V1 to Vn is a basis, then every set containing more than n vectors is linearly dependent. Well, over here, what we are saying is, if I succeed to find a set S that is a basis for the vector space V, then every basis for V must have n vectors. That leads naturally to the concept of the dimension of a vector space. If a vector space V has a basis consisting of n vectors, then the number n is actually called the dimension of V. Remember that once there is a basis with n vectors, all other bases would have n vectors. That number n is actually called the dimension of V and denoted by dim V equals n. If V consists of the zero vector alone, then we say the dimension of V is zero. So you can already tell that we would be interested in finding the dimension of vector spaces. And to do that, if I can simply find a basis for the vector space, the number of vectors in that basis would simply give me the dimension of my vector space. It gets even more interesting when I ask you to find the dimension of a subspace and not just the vector space. For example, here the vector space R3, its dimension is 3. Because remember, the standard basis has three vectors, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So the dimension is 3. But does that mean that every subspace of R3 must also have dimension 3? No. We can easily verify that W defined by D, C minus D, C such that C and D are real numbers is 
a subspace of R3. You can refer to the lecture on subspaces on how to prove this. But I want us to look at the dimension of this subspace. So what we do is we start off by writing W as the set defined as such. The first component is D, the second component C minus D, the third component C where C and D are real numbers. I use my standard definition of addition and scalar multiplication of vectors. I pull out my C, I end up with 0, 1, 1. Pull out my D, end up with 1, negative 1, 0, where C and D are real numbers. That simply means that W is generated by these two vectors. Remember this definition right here? This is the span. The set of all linear combinations of these two vectors produces my W. We can also write this in this form. That means 0, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, span W, i.e. the dimension of my subspace W is 2. Similarly, we can verify that W as defined is a subspace of R3. Just verify those two properties. W is not empty. And for every U and V in W, alpha U plus beta V is in W. Now to find the dimension of W, we start again by setting W as a set of all vectors represented in this form. Factorize out B, we end up with 2, 1, 0. This is the set of all linear combinations of 2, 1, 0. And that means the loon vector 2, 1, 0 generates W or spans W, i.e. the dimension of W is 1. We shall see many more examples like this in class. Theorem. The basis test in an n-dimensional space. Recall that to verify that S is a basis, there are two conditions we have to meet. Number one, S spans V. And number two, S is linearly independent. But what happens if V is a vector space of dimension n? We already know the dimension of V. It's dimension n. And S is a set with n vectors do we still have to show both conditions for the basis or not as a matter of fact we don't have to verify both conditions of the basis if v is a vector space of dimension n and our set of interests has n vectors so the first statement if v is a vector space of dimension n number one if S is the set defined by the n vectors v1, v2, vn, if this set is linearly independent, we stop right there and conclude that S is a basis for v. We do not have to verify that it spans v. On the other hand, if we can verify that S defined by these vectors v1 to vn, if s spans v, then we can also stop right there and conclude that s is a basis for v. Interesting. So if v is an n-dimensional vector space, and s is a set with n vectors, to prove that s is a basis for v, all we have to do is either we prove that S is linearly independent or we prove that S spans V. We do not have to prove both. Any one of these would suffice in our proof that S is a basis for V. Interesting. We shall see more of this in class and this section has plenty of proofs for us to enjoy. Thank you very much.